What's up guys, what we are gonna do here on the channel today is something a little bit different, something that I've personally never actually done before. We're not gonna be reviewing a graphics card or doing a system build or taking a look at the latest motherboard. What we're gonna be doing is saving the planet, at least in a very small part. You see, e-waste is a real thing. Unfortunately, it is starting to build up in our landfills as release cycles get shorter and shorter and people have a constant need to be on the forefront of new technologies. A lot of times, older products just get thrown in the trash. So instead of doing that today, we're gonna to take this older hard drive that is still functional, but doesn't really serve a whole lot of purpose. And instead of having it sit in my drawer or throwing it in the garbage, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a piece of practical, functional art. So what I have here on the desk in front of me is actually the Seagate hard drive that we use in our cheapest Newegg build PC that didn't really function all that well, or at all. It's 80 gigabytes, it's still functional. The fact that the system didn't work is not the fault of the hard drive. However, 80 gigabytes by today's standards is really kind of unusable. There are some games that are bigger than 80 gigabytes. So using this to install Windows and also put stuff on, it really won't work. It also doesn't serve any purpose as any kind of mass storage. So instead of having it just sit in my office and do nothing or throw it out or try to maybe take it to an e-waste recycle center, which is something that you can do, I wanted to crack it open. I wanted to check out what was inside. I've never actually taken apart a hard drive myself. And then when I thought about doing this, I was like, why don't I do something with those components as I'm disassembling them? And my thought was to make a clock. So that's what we're gonna try to do today. And in fact, apparently a lot of people has ha have had this idea because when I thought about it myself and I was like, wow, I wonder if there's anybody else who's tried this. Uh, apparently there's a million people who have tried this and it's all over the internet, but I've never done it myself. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna crack this open. We're gonna show you what's inside and then we're going to attempt to make it into a functional clock. In order to do this, you actually don't need a whole lot of parts. You need the hard drive itself. Obviously, you probably need some glue. We're gonna use Gorilla Glue today. Uh, having an iFixit toolkit or a similar kit with a lot of different bits is gonna be very helpful as well. And then you need the actual clock parts. Now, I bought these kits on Amazon. They were, I don't know, $10 a piece or something like that. And the reason that I bought two of them was because I wasn't sure which shaft length I'm going to need with this hard drive. So these are two different shaft lengths. Uh, judging by the size of the hard drive and the thickness, this is actually a fairly thin hard drive and I very, very much doubt if it's multiple platters considering it's only 80 gigabytes. I probably will end up going with the smaller shaft and seeing how that works out. And if we need the longer one, we could always do that. And there's a lot of penis jokes that we could say right now too. This is basically all you need. So let's take this apart. Let's see what's inside and uh, go from there. Here's the brain of the hard drive and the uh, SATA and power connection points. But we won't be needing that. Let's, uh, let's try to get into this a little more. And uh, I don't see any other screws. So this, this is really stuck on here well. There might be, maybe there's a screw underneath. Maybe there's a screw underneath the sticker, so let's uh, let's get rid of that. There's no screw underneath the sticker. All right, let's see if we could pry off. Pry this off. Screw under here. Is there a sticker under here? There's just oh uh, man. That's all I needed to do. That was way too easy. So here is our hard drive. This was basically the initial point of this video. I wanted to see if I could take one of these apart and show you guys the internals, and here it is. It's very simple. It works very similarly to how a CD player works. 
The data is on the platter here. The platter spins around. Looks like I got a fingerprint on it already. But the platter spins around. The arm holds the read right head and moves back and forth across as this is spinning and reads the data off of it. And that's basically it. Hard drives have been the same for a long time. This one is uh, is pretty thin because it only has one platter that spins, but as we've had the need for larger and larger storage capacities, the form factor, the physical form factor of uh, this enclosure has stayed basically the same, but we've been able to stack more and more platters. Yeah, they're a little more complicated, but the basic mechanism of how it reads your data is exactly the same, has not changed in quite some time. So what I'm gonna have to do now is take the spindle off and uh, reposition the head a little bit down further and then see if we could get one of these clocks in from the back. Now, in order to do that, I might actually have to cut this, which I wasn't anticipating. Um, but actually, there's a there's, this should be a, this should be a pass through there. So let's take the spindle out and see uh, what else, how we're gonna proceed from there. So it looks like I actually might have to take out the arm in order to get the platter out and then disassemble this middle spindle piece. Ah, got the platter off. All right, so now we gotta get this uh, this middle spindle piece out. So most hard drives have screws in these three spaces and apparently this Seagate drive, whether it's because it's older or whatever, I don't know, does not. In fact, the spindle actually is just kind of wedged in there from the back and what I had to do was actually take a hammer to it, uh, flip this over, take a hammer to it and kind of force this through and out and that's how I got the spindle out. Um, and in the process, I, I broke the, where is it? I don't know, it's somewhere. I broke the tip off of the, the reed head, so that sucks, but that's okay. Uh, it, I think it looks pretty much, pretty, pretty much the same. So uh, we have our platter here and the reed right head still, still going good. And uh, we're gonna reattach this to, uh, to, to the enclosure using some glue and uh, kind of go from there. And then we're gonna reattach the, uh, the, 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 um, the arm. Make sure that's in place too. This, I think, is gonna be the way that we're gonna start to try to build our clock. The arm I have as far out of the way as I can have it with having this top piece installed. Uh, this, this piece right here actually blocks the arm from going down any further. If for some reason the, the watch hands are, or the clock hands are too long and they might hit this, uh, either I could try to get shorter hands uh, or I can maybe try to move this down a little bit further, but I kind of want the, the arm to be where it is right now, uh, just to be part of the, I don't know, the decoration, the, um, uh, you know, the presentation of the clock. So let's see how our spindles uh, line up. This is shaft length three quarters of an inch, and this is shaft length five eighths of an inch. So let's try the five eighths first. Here are the hands that they sent me as part of this kit. And I guess the shortest one is this one. These are all way too long. <clears throat> and these are the shortest ones. And I, I anticipate having a problem here. Yeah, even like, even the hour hand is gonna be too long. 
And it would be too long for everything, not just for that head. It would hit this. Um, so, why don't I take one of these, like, plain Jane ones and try to trim it instead? So these might be the easiest to trim down, I guess. But these are really thick for the size of this clock. I think that might look a little silly. Yeah, I think these might look a little silly if they're just... Yeah, I think I, I think we're gonna go with these and trim them. So uh, let's let's try that. So the longest I could have it be is like this long. Maybe it, yeah, something like this. Should I angle? Maybe I'll angle it to make it look a little. Oh geez, maybe I'll angle it to make it look a little. Oh geez, there it went. All right, we've recovered it. Uh, yeah, so this is the this is gonna be the, the hour hand, and then the minute hand. Wait, so this is the hour hand is this is the longest it can be. So okay, so I actually need to uh, need to trim it a little shorter. Unless it goes under the arm, this might actually travel. Okay, I'm gonna need to uh, to install the actual clock mechanism itself, <clears throat> and see exactly. They sent me two. Why two? I don't know. Did I order a two pack? Maybe I did. All right. So this is the the shorter of the two. Let's see how this lines up. That is not long enough. Let me get the other one out. Let me get the three quarters. That, I think, will work. What I'm gonna need to do is I'm gonna need to secure this to the back here and make sure it's centered, which will be a task in and of itself. Uh, and then figure out the hands from there. So I did some trial and erroring with the with the glue at the back and it's just not going to work. I'm going to use the included mounting hardware that they sent with the kit, which maybe I should have just done in the first place. Uh, but it actually seems that that's going to work pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to put the rubber jam over top here and then put this through here. Yeah, that should, I think that'll work. I think that'll work pretty well, actually. So washer, got the nut, okay, I don't think that's going anywhere, great, now we got to figure out our hands, so I'm going to cut these down even more, so that they look appropriate for the size here. So, all right, it works, sort of, I think. So we gotta put some numbers on here, uh, which I have here. And I think because of the size of the numbers, we're not gonna fill out this entire clock, but maybe we'll do the the 12, the three, and the nine. I guess maybe the six, if I can get it down there. What I'm gonna do is actually just take the plastic that the glue came in, squeeze some out in there. Hopefully that stays for at least a few minutes. And then use a toothpick to, uh, to apply our numbers. Where'd that three go? There it is. Because these are, unfortunately, these do not come with any adhesive backing. I was trying to find ones that I liked with adhesive backing, and no luck. So, this will have to do. All right. I'm only gonna get one shot at this.
And here it is. All finished with a battery in it and running and everything. Uh, I'll throw some B-roll shots of the up so you can see uh, how it came out, but I'm actually really pleased. I am really bad with working with uh, like super glues and I have a lot of residue around the numbers, which if I um, have the opportunity to do this again, I know how to do this better now. So I would probably be a lot more efficient with my glue usage and placement of everything and hopefully it wouldn't get all this smudging. Uh, I'm gonna see if I could use some kind of a solvent to get off that residual. And obviously I have to clean all of the, uh, the fingerprints and stuff. Um, but as is, I think it came out great. So just to recap for you guys, if you wanna do this project at home, what you will need is you need obviously a hard drive to start out with. Uh, you will need this one of these kits, which comes with the clock itself. Uh, and I would recommend for this, I use the, the three quarters inch. If you have a platter that's for some reason thicker or multiple platters or something like that, you probably need a longer shaft and they sell them on Amazon longer kits. Uh, but this, these kits were really good. I, I don't know why I ordered, they're like double kits. There's two of them in here for some reason, but it was actually good because um, I needed the parts. Anyway, uh, just need one motor that comes with like the, you know, these arms. And you need numbers and you need crazy glue, super glue of some kind. And that's it, and just a little bit of time. And then um, you have yourself a nice piece of wall art, which I think came out great. Uh, and I'm very happy with. And we've saved ourselves some e-waste, although we've created some additional plastic waste here. So I don't know if we've really uh, created the impact that I wanted environmentally, but at least these kind of little baggies can be recycled. In any event, guys, I know this video was a little different. I hope you guys uh, liked it and uh, I, if you, if you make one of these projects, if you do something like this, let me know down below in the comments. Shoot me a link on Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys have come up with. Uh, and uh, that's it. Get subscribed to the channel if you're not already. Thanks guys for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.